Hey, how's it going guys? Phil here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to upgrade the RAM and hard drive in an ASUS A15 Tough Gaming laptop. The model number of this ASUS A15 laptop is FA507RE. Let's flip the laptop over so we can remove the bottom panel. There are 12 screws total, and we'll remove them starting at the back and working our way towards the front. Try to keep track of the order of the screws as you remove them, because they're not all the same size. The front left corner screw is a shorter one, and the two in the middle along the back are slightly longer. You'll want to leave the front right hand corner screw for last, as it does not have to be fully removed, since it's the pop-up screw. If you do take it out completely, it's not a big deal. Just note that it's only threaded about halfway up, and is supposed to pop up the corner of the panel if you loosen it last. If your corner hasn't popped up, gently insert a plastic spudger or pry tool to release the small clips holding on the panel. Slide your tool along the gap while lifting gently to unlatch the tabs along the entire perimeter of the panel. You'll want to release the catches along the front and both sides. Just work slowly and try not to rush, as the clips are tiny and could snap with too much force. Then you should be able to lift and tilt the panel towards the back of the laptop and it should release and lift away easily. Here's what the pop-up screw looks like on the inside. There's a plastic washer that's supposed to catch and lift the corner of the panel up as you unscrew it. Inside, the battery is towards the front, there are two exhaust fans at the sides towards the rear, and in this empty space you can add a second NVMe SSD. Before we go any further, let's disconnect the battery to avoid accidental electrical discharge. Using your fingernail or tool, gently push the metal locking tab away from the battery connector. Then lift both sides of the white connector straight up. To be extra safe, we'll discharge any residual charge by pressing and holding the power button for 5 to 10 seconds. Underneath this plastic shield are the primary hard drive and two RAM slots. My pre-installed M.2 SSD is a 512GB Intel 670p with pre-installed heat shield. There is a single 8GB stick of Samsung DDR5 single rank 4800MHz RAM installed with the second slot left empty. A mounting screw is included for secondary storage, so let's remove that first. Note that the M.2 NVMe slots in this laptop are sized for 2280 form factor drives only, and both are Gen 3 PCIe slots. This is the drive that I'll be installing. It's the WD Black SN850 with a 500GB capacity, and this is a Gen 4 PCIe SSD with a max rated read speed of 7000 megabytes per second. It'll still work with this laptop since the drive is backwards compatible with older interfaces, but keep in mind that the actual read and write speed performance will be limited to the previous generation's Gen 3 speed. We'll line up the notch on the drive with the slot and insert it at a slight upward angle. Then press the other side down and secure with the screw we removed earlier. While not required, I recommend adding a passive heatsink, like this metal plate with double-sided thermal sticker, on top of the drive to keep overheating to a minimum. Just make sure that the thermal sticker makes good contact with the chips on the drive. For gaming, consider adding at least another 8GB stick of RAM up to the maximum capacity allowed of 32GB. To replace an existing stick, pull outward on the metal tabs at the sides and it should pop up, then simply lift it out. When reinstalling, line up the notch with the tab in the slot, slide it in at a slight upward tilt, then press the corners down until they click into place. You will install a second stick the same way. And here I have an identical 8GB Samsung stick, which I'll put a link to in the description below. Now we can reconnect the battery connector by lining it up with the pins on the board and pressing down firmly. If you have trouble getting the metal lock to slide down, the connector may not be fully seated. Make sure both sides and the center are completely flush to the board. Then slide the metal locking clip down over the connector to secure it in place. Now we can replace the plastic shield. When replacing the bottom cover, start at the back, then snap in the sides by pressing down gently, followed by the front edge. Finally, replace the 11 screws, or 12 if you remove the pop-up screw, paying attention to their lengths and respective locations. When turning it on again after an upgrade, it may power off automatically after a minute, but just press the power button again and it should boot up. I always like to double check the system is picking up the new hardware in the BIOS by pressing F2 during the power on sequence. Here we can see the total memory is about 16,000 megabytes, or 16 gigabytes. 
and in the storage section, we can see the new WD Black SN850 drive as well as the original Intel drive. If you've installed a brand new secondary drive, you'll need to initialize, partition, and format it before you can use or see it in Windows File Explorer. And you can check out my other video in the info bubble above on how to do that. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comments. I'll put a link to the tools and parts I recommend in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and join me next time.